we get, I would say, anywhere between 350 to 600 applicants, um, de depending on the year. And so the applications, they, you don't just apply to the fellowship because each jurisdiction has a very specific job and scope of work. So they can vary immensely between the seven jurisdictions. Um, here in the Atlantic Caribbean, the coral disease, unfortunately, has really taken precedence in all three of our, of our three jurisdictions here. Um, and some of the Pacific in, in Guam currently, it's some mangrove and seagrass restoration, which impacts our coral reefs. So while it's not sort of coral reef specific, so we were looking for someone that had some wetlands experience. Um, and American Samoa, they're doing, um, they're starting up with their coral restoration and continuing to grow the coral restoration program. So it's a very different skill set for each of the seven jurisdictions. So applicants can apply to one that they feel very strongly. They fits, you know, their background and the skills that they can bring to the table. Or we have people that apply to all seven, you know, that have a very broad um, set of skills. And, and so tell me how the islands are involved in this. You mentioned that do each of the island areas give you their priorities? How does yes. that work? So we work very closely. So um, my partners at the NOAA Coral Conservation Program and I work very closely with each, each of the jurisdictions. We start with the point of contact that represents that's, that's um, jurisdiction to the All Islands Committee. We work with the point of contact and they really sort of develop this initial scope of work that is you know what fits into their priorities and what are they looking for what are they lacking in capacity and what do they really need this fellow to come in and really do and so then we work with them to make sure that it you know fits sort of the scope that it's you know we're not getting someone who's over they need someone who's overqualified that sort of thing um, and then it fits within the national priorities for coral reef management and so that's a you know, month, or pro month or two process. We go back and forth, we finalize the scope of work. So the jurisdictions are heavily involved in determining what they need in, on their island. Could you just remind us again why coral reefs are important and, and yes. what, how they impact our lives? Yes, yeah, so coral reefs um, are very important for, for, for many reasons. Um, to globally, they provide coastal protection, um, in our ever increasing, it seems like hurricane season in both the Atlantic and the Pacific Basin. Um, they provide coastal protection against storm surge. They provide fish habitat for both reef fish and then juvenile fish, you know, that populate all areas of, of the coast, um, which is especially important, I think, in your smaller island communities where subsistence fishing, you know, it provides a large amount of protein for, for many people worldwide, especially when you get to, you know, developing countries and, and you know, for Indonesia, the Philippines, where with the local fish, it's, it's not just a recreational activity. It actually provides, you know, the large amount of protein for, for large populations. Um, there, the biomedical, you know, people are still di discovering biomedical resources that come from the ocean. And, you know, is that cure for a type of cancer are gonna be found on, a reef or from a reef species one day, you know, we still don't know. There's still so much unknown. Um, it provides biodiversity and, and there's such rich habitats and one of the most diverse ecosystems that we have. So I think that they're worth protecting. And, you know, here in Florida where people are like, wow, who even knew we had a reef? And, um, you know, I think in some of your smaller islands, people are more familiar with it, but it's, this is why, you know, they are important for, for many, many reasons and, and are worth being protected and studied.